911. What's your emergency? You have to help us. He's bleeding. Oh my god, Sam! Miss, please calm down. Please state the nature of your emergency. There's been a crash. They're hurt. You have to help them. We're dispatching units to your location. Please stay on the line until they arrive. In a world where regrets are common, I was ignorant to a lot of little things that nearly cost me my life. I was scared with a lot of emotions running through me. When I tell people I'm a survivor, they need to know what made it possible. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dr. Van Show, a podcast for people of all ages, highlighting and discussing health and well-being in Grand Star. The three most significant days in your life are the day you are born, the day you die, but most importantly, the day you choose to live. Welcome to the maiden episode of the Dr. Vine Show. I'm your host, Dr. Vine, and today you will discover why your nutritional choices are so important that it is a major key factor if you would be able to see tomorrow's daylight. In the next 18 minutes before the show is over, four Americans currently breathing will be dead as a consequence of the effect the food they consumed had on their hearts. Let me drop this eye opener. Do you know that a medium-sized butter popcorn enjoyed while relaxing contains more artery-blocking fat than a bacon and egg breakfast, a big McDonald's hamburger and fries for lunch, and a chicken curry dinner combined? Other goodies to rack up in today's show include the doctor's report, where you get all the current health news from across the globe. Next in line is the post box where all your shout-outs, comments, and inspiring stories are shared with everybody. And of course, I can't let you go without the distract summary, the top 5 prescription. If you're ready to finally discover how to eat your way past a heart attack, make sure there is no distraction around you, and we can feast on this topic together in the intensive care unit. D-I-C-U Listen to the health topics discussed intensively. The very important topics dissected into details. Get informed. Stay informed. It was a bright and shiny morning when 37 years old Mrs. Debbie Sidons was getting her four kids ready for school on a day that seemed perfectly normal. When she suddenly felt her heart racing faster than usual, she brushed it aside as an effect of the morning duties she was up to. But as Debbie walked into the living room to meet her eldest son, she was suddenly stopped by a sharp stabbing kind of pain in her chest. Trying to reach for a safe place to sit, Debbie noticed she had also developed pain sensations in her lower jaw, which gradually extended to the sides of her left and right arm. Well, she staggered to the nearby couch, hoping to find relief from the pain, but it just couldn't disappear. She had no other person at home besides her four kids. She tried reaching for the phone but she couldn't. Luckily her son understood that his mom wasn't alright and handed her a phone. She called her mother-in-law phone but she was in a very far away location. She was confused, what should she do? She remembered her father's phone number and she called her father. Luckily he was in time just before more damage was done. Sensing she had minutes to leave, he immediately called an ambulance. Time became a factor. Every second seemed to count. Where was the ambulance? Thoughts racing if she would make it alive into the ambulance. Her kids were crying at the thought of losing their mother. Just in time, she was in the hospital. After tests and treatments, Debbie was told by the doctors that she had just experienced a heart attack and she had only three minutes to leave if she hadn't made it to the hospital in time. She couldn't believe it. Her life had just flashed in front of her. Debbie thought she had done enough to stay healthy. She had no family history of heart attacks, so how could that be possible? She returned home after her discharge and realized how much the experience had impacted on her. She was frightened to do any household work. She couldn't clean the dishes or cook meals. She could not even carry her small baby up for fear of developing a second heart attack. Debbie had to undergo a six-week rehabilitation lesson where healthy eating and exercise was taught before she gradually got back to a normal life. 
Today, you're going to discover these lessons without having to go through the tragedy of a heart attack. Imagine her four kids. What would have been their fate if their mother had died as a result of poor diet choice? Something totally preventable. Have you ever sat down to think of how far you could reach if you chose to live properly? That dream life you've worked hard for. Office promotion. Graduating with a degree. Living long enough to see your kids doing well in life. Watching all your hard work paying off. Tell me what beats that. Tell me. You are listening to the Dr. Vine Show. The most educative show on the Heart disease is the number one cause of premature death in the world currently, the World Health Organization says. If you're listening to this, I congratulate you for taking the first and bold step in the most significant day of your life. You have chosen to live. I want you to do just one thing for me. Ready? I want you to write down three questions regarding this topic which you have doubts about. If by the end of this episode, your questions are not answered, Stop me anywhere you see me, write me on social media, and don't let me go until it is answered. I'm not kidding. Back to the topic. In the United States, one of every three deaths is because of cardiovascular defect. An average of one death every 40 seconds, according to the American Heart Association records. Heart attack accounts for the majority of death caused by cardiovascular disease. In Australia, 23 people lose their life every day from a heart attack. This is more or less similar in Africa, Europe, and other continents of the world. The World Health Organization specifically mentions that 3 out of every 4 heart attack deaths occur in low and middle income countries. So for every 1 heart attack death in a developed country, 3 happen in the developing world and underdeveloped countries. The major reason for this being the lack of proper care and emergency services for heart attack victims. This shows that no country is left out from the heart attack pandemic ravaging the world. Poor diet in both children and adults have been highlighted to be the reason for developing a heart attack. The American Heart Association says that between 2003 and 2012, there was a decline in the deaths due to heart attack. This was as a result of whole grain consumption and decreased consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. New information now shows that heart attack is on the rise again, with obesity labeled one of the most common risk factors in leading to one. High cholesterol intake is another major risk factor. For every three adults you come across today, one will have high levels of cholesterol, meaning there is a great chance of a sudden heart attack to one of every three persons you meet today. You could be having a high cholesterol level too. Why don't you check it out? In a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in March 2017, it specifically mentioned that a large number of deaths due to cardiovascular diseases are linked to poor diets. And in the UK, a research published in August 2017 in the European Heart Journal by the University of Cambridge found that being overweight or obese increases your chance of a heart attack by 28% compared to those with a healthy body weight even if they have normal blood pressure blood sugar, and cholesterol levels. Now we know a poor diet guarantees a heart attack, so what is a poor diet? A food full of calories with little or no nutrients is a poor diet. The second type of poor diet being heart unfriendly foods. The rule is, if you are trying not to gain weight, don't eat more calories than you can burn up every day. Did you get that? Remember, obesity is a risk factor for heart attacks. If I were to ask you, do you eat for eating's sake or eating to nourish your body? You have an awesome responsibility to keep your body healthy. It is the only place your soul resides. Eating plenty of food with less nutrients going into the body means you are accumulating calories at the detriment of your cardiac fitness. Knowing how important it is to avoid junk food and calorie accumulation, Let's switch over to the heart unfriendly foods. They are the foods that take you a step closer to a heart attack. They are your everyday meals 
and you're probably feasting on any one of them right now. Are you a step closer to a heart attack? Find out. You are listening to the Dr. Vine Show. The most educative show on the planet. Just like you, I grew up believing fat is a component of a balanced diet. But is that the whole truth? All fats and oil are high in calories, but some are more culpable to heart damage than the others. These heart unfriendly fats and oil are under three categories. The first of these is the saturated fats, which are found in full fat milk, cheese, and butter. The second category you should know of is the trans fats, which are very rich in cholesterol, like those found in your processed and packaged foods bought from the supermarket with long shelf life. This type of fat can be identified even if the nutritional label doesn't mention it. Look out for hydrogenated oil listed as one of the ingredients. An unlikely suspect that contains this type of fat is chocolate. Chocolates are made from cocoa butter, which has the ability of being solid at room temperature and loses its strength and straight away melts when in the mouth due to the nature of the fat it contains. But adulterated or fake chocolate substitute this cocoa butter with vegetable oil. Very few companies are considerate enough to label it hydrogenated vegetable oil. The vegetable oil is hydrogenated to enable it to have a solid chocolate bar shape. This process of hydrogenating the oil converts it into saturated fats, which makes it dangerous for the heart. I'm sure you're interested to know why the food authorities haven't put a check on these products. The truth is that they are permitted only on the condition that the ingredients must be clearly mentioned on the label, so that the consumer can make their own choice. Did you hear that? The choice to live is in your own hands. In the US, a product can only be called chocolate if it contains 100% cocoa butter. In India, all bars containing hydrogenated vegetable oil do not mention the word chocolate on the cover. Do watch out for that. The top category of fat foods to look out for are the fried items. French fries, deeply fried donuts, and other deeply fried foods. Besides fats and oil, red meat is the next heart unfriendly food to avoid. Mutton, lamb, beef, pork are red meats with a large amount of saturated fats. They raise the level of the harmful cholesterol in the body. Should you stop eating meat? That's a choice you have to make. But in the case you choose to continue having them, reducing the intake has been advised by cardiologists. Red meat is by no means the only heart unfriendly meat. Processed meat is the next in line. Processed meats are those meats preserved with salt, nitrites, or other preservatives. They include hot dogs, bacon, sausages, salami, packaged turkey, and packaged chicken. The salt and preservatives applied on them are the reason they damage the heart. Now to the most unusual offender, egg yolks. Egg yolks have been proven to contain saturated fats and are high in cholesterol. Eggs shouldn't be discarded per se, but the yolks should be ingested minimally. And to the most common, excess salt in food. As important as it is in making our meals palatable and tasty, too much sodium intake has a direct effect on the heart. The American Heart Association says a daily intake of salt should be less than 1.5 kg why the World Health Organization extends the limit to 5 kg per day. It is shocking that some people consume as much as 15 kg of salt in a day. The lesser you eat salt and salted products, the better chance you give yourself of avoiding a heart attack. Listen attentively. You should also be aware that sugary drinks and soft drinks are not of much good to the body. According to the health experts at Harvard Medical School, more calories are ingested from a bottle of soft drink. A 12-ounce can of soda contains an equivalent of 10 teaspoons of table sugar. Diet sodas, though, are sugar and calorie-free and are an exception to this. James Wing, a student who had just gained admission into the university to study his dream course, calls it his first real encounter with death. 